Chris, what is your background in coming to all of this? Uh, not not much. I do have some uh, sitting background uh, uh, some years ago, and then I've somehow have connected with Corey on on social media and i've only attended like maybe one class before and i i'm, I'm trying to get uh, myself so i can um uh be active member that's great very good so this this aspect of what we're doing today is definitely sort of rooted in the healing tradition you know rather than a meditative one per se um it's a the expression is definitely a japanese type of expression and then, you know, well, furthermore, it's probably rooted in a more sort of ancient Japanese shamanic expression, you know, than then how that's been sort of shaped and changed through modernity. Um, but we'll, 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 we'll get into how that sort of expresses itself, but definitely has a relationship to, you know, sort of this broader sense of a natural movement. Yeah. All right. I love Elijah's got the best posture. <laughs> just so, just so nice to see. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, good. So we'll get started then with, with today. And since it's just the, the four of us, we'll, I'll just make it a little bit more of sort of a informal discussion. And just because of the four of us as well, too. You know what, I'm going to invite everybody to keep actually keep their microphones on because we won't have too much cross traffic. And then what's nice with that is if there is then some sense of audibility or some beginning of expression, we actually get to create that kind of um, cross talk and information like from the rhythm and the sounding it creates nice syncopations, you know, and sort of allows us to sort of move in that way. So as I said before, better to reference back to the original video, we talk a little bit more at the end but I just will give just the the sort of the three sort of three aspects that we'll be exploring and layering, and then where that can go to. And so at its heart, um, Seiki Jitsu and what we're doing here is called Seiki Taiso, so Seiki exercise, or a sort of a Seiki expression. It is ultimately a rhythmic engagement, and I always hazard because the rhythm ultimately we should fall into a wholeness that informs and is, you know, it is always whole. It is always a whole complex rhythm expressing itself. But sometimes we have to start in a way that breaks that wholeness apart so that we can tinker and play and then be able to fall into what has always been there and always is there. And so if we take that sort of global rhythmicity, both in its interiority, what we're experiencing inside, and its expression into the exteriority and meeting that world out here. The three rhythms that I want to play, bass rhythms that I want to play with, is a sense of rocking, a, you know, a type of rocking motion, is our breath. And our breath, as it is, with one caveat, that it's useful to bring the breath as it is into an audible frame. So we actually get the feedback of hearing the breath. And that feedback of hearing the breath we're breathing then changes the breath through this sort of wheel of iteration. So the rhythmicity of breathing. And then the last is the rhythmicity of, of touch. And these three bases will then expand. If we take that as like the basis, they can, through these turning overs and turning overs, can become a more complex expression. So the rocking, and swaying can become dance, for example, you know, that is, and there's all these intermittent, you know, inter intermediate um, ways that it will travel to this. The breath in its audibility can become chant and even fully expressed song. It can become melodic, not lyrical, but melodic. And this simple dowsing and attending with touch can become full-blown healing modalities of, 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 of manual concern and energetic expression. And then the combination of all of those happening simultaneously. And so there really is this really broad range for creativity to start coming through as we mix and layer these together. The very first thing we're going to start with then today, though, is this, this very rhythmic 
uh, rocking in motion. And there's lots of metaphors that I mentioned last time that I like, but I'll just say them very quickly. Uh, before you started grade one and it got kicked out of you in school by the teacher saying, sit still, especially for all us ADHD kids, you know, uh, and we and noticed the ADHD kids always were subversive because they translated sit still to moving their foot really fast under the table so that nobody could see it, right? You know, people that have that, that motion, right? That's always going. So we want to reclaim that playful before school started that we can just find the rock and sway. Why all of us love to get on swings, you know, and feel that motion of swinging. Um, recognize that we remember this when we were held in our mother's arms where she would sway and sway us, right? To find a way to settle and meet our nervous system. When we were amniotic and we were in the womb and we were moving in this undulatory rhythmic way in water, our deep evolutionary memory that we are land creatures that brought the ocean onto land, that we are still predominantly water, that we have the memory of water. And remember that suspension in water is actually suspension in three dimensions, not the two that gravity holds us to. So a spine, when you actually say get in a float tank and open up, the spine starts to actually move as a fish moves. It finds an undulation that only can show itself when gravity isn't imposing itself as it does on land. You know, so we, we have this memory of this fluid evolutionary memory. So this is the swaying. So we'll start with that and then we'll add in the breath and then we'll add in the touch and then we'll start to play with it. So I'm just going to invite you guys right now in any of those memories, any of those metaphors to start to engage just that central, that gentle rocking motion that's available. And it's a letting go, right? It's not, there's two ways. You can tinker and just start a rock like you would a metronome. That's fine. But I think this practice at its best is a letting go practice. And as you let it go and let a rock start to emerge, that you don't fight gravity and try to create postural stability and holding, as you let go of holding, right? As you release that holding, as you start to acquiesce to gravity rather than fight it. And you'll notice it might be a back and forward. It might be a circle. You might be clockwise. You might be counterclockwise. It might be side to side. And you'll notice too, as well as just a rigid motion, as though the top of your head is drawing something in the air, or even gently your coccyx, even though you're sitting on a chair, starts to draw something on the ground. You can also start to invite that the spine has many motions, many movements of freedom. And you may, as well as the sway, start to find a sense of undulation. And we're just gonna take a few minutes and I like closing the eyes because it takes out that horizon that I'm always trying to fix to with balance. And you'll notice that balance is one of three components is vestibular, it's visual and it's proprioceptive. So when we close the eyes and take out the visual, we actually give ourselves a freedom of motion to be unstable. That's it. And even as I'm talking to start to receive my words in the sway, Right, that the body is moving to receive my words. It's not the ears opening. The body's already receiving and moving to receive the prosody and tone of my voice, the rhythmicity of my voice, which is coming from the movement of my sway, what's being informed by your movements and sway. That's it. That's it. That's lovely. Already, I've got goosebumps, feeling the resonance of all of your guys' movements. We're finding our way into that wonderful sort of gentle place and it is playful and it is wonderfully held and the nervous system remembers. And we're finding this lovely, lovely place again, spring days, swings in a park, bobbing on waves. That's it. Lovely, lovely. Already notice things that are preempting for example touch i love elijah's already his wisdom of his movement is already preempting a sense of touch i, I love what i'm seeing right now in, in elijah's movement of almost that he's beginning to conduct this inner orchestra i love that corey right now is 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 is, is inviting the sense of each joint this joint anew with this movement I love Chris's wild abandon to the sway, this big, broad movement, 
you know, just letting go, letting go. Everybody's different, but we're all finding our way into this in our own unique way. Just so lovely, just so lovely. And now to asking the question, what am I holding? What can I let go? Letting go isn't an, is, it, there's, you're actively letting go, but it's not an activation. It's not a doing. It's just saying, what doings am I doing that I don't need to be doing? And then as you ask that question, what can I let go? Don't answer it in a mental sense. Just let the body find its own way to respond to what can I let go here? You know, I was rushing around with computer issues. I recognize I don't need to hold that. I can let that go. And as you're doing this, just start to become aware of the breath as it is. And the breath as it is, I just want you to add a little amplification to make the breath as it is audible to your own ears. That's it. Whoever that breath was, I think it was Chris. I really love that. I really love the authenticity of that. And you could hear just the releasing of that audibility of the breath to your ears and mine. You know, it had a very beautiful aesthetic, you know, and you don't need to know what that means. But notice our fear to be audible, right? Notice our fear to breathe out loud because all of a sudden the nature of breath is a very sensual territory. It's a very intimate and vulnerable territory. It's very core. And notice that as you make your breath audible with these movements, you might be surprised with the rhythmicity and tone and expression of that audibility. It might not be smooth. It might be staccato. It might have, mm. you know, different peaks and valleys that surprise you from a straight expansion and contraction. Really love the aesthetic there, Corey, of what you just think of letting things contract and move in. I really felt that. You know, often our Zen friends talk about Sosukan, Susukan, Sosukan breathing, that, that letting it go all the way. And all of a sudden with this audibility, you might find that naturally you just are able to ride the wave of the fullness of that breath all the way out in its audibility. And notice how that then informs the swaying and the motion. And one of the things that I'm noticing, and you may not notice today, and you may not notice for weeks, and you may not notice for months, and that's okay, is right now my swaying has led to vibration. So a vibratory movement has taken me. A vibratory movement is holding me. And you're going to hear that vibratory expression in the audibility of my breath. And this isn't something to search for or look for or covet or want. But it's just to recognize that the sway for me has just opened up now a shake. We have gone, and it's not quite a vibration yet. That's more subtle. But I've gone from a, shake, a sway to a shake. And you'll hear that in my voicing. And you'll hear that in my breathing. And I am in my tendon. My abdominal muscles are contracting. And it's a little painful for me in this moment. It's, I'm having to surrender to this forceful contraction oh, and pumping. And so there's something that comes from the sway. I talked about these wheels of iteration. I've gone from a shaking and now a pumping is happening in the tongue and the belly, the hara. Oh, and that pumping is driving my breath and my breath is driving the pumping. Oh, but you could also feel tired. I'm entering into an activation, but you might enter into a relaxation. You could be in the fullness and sways of a thunderous movement but also the deepest stillness mm. after a thunderstorm. There's going to be cycles that need not correspond with us. 
you guys keep moving my batteries getting low i'm just going to get my phone geared here As you engage that sway and the audibility of your breathing, the next thing I want to bring in is this notion of dowsing. Like we're dowsing for water, we're dowsing for oil, and you notice that there's some place that your hand may want to fall to on the body. Right now it's on the chest, and for me it's showing itself as a rhythmicity, a vibration, but it might be a rub, a poke, a hit. And again, now we have sway and breath and touch, three body system, infinite complexity. Where does this go? Initial conditions always ending in something novel and different as these three start to engage. I love right now that all of you in your own way finding Corey, I love right now that you're using the three dimensionality of space. I love the conducting that Elijah has found. And I love that Chris looks to be falling into a deeper and deeper sense of a subtle ecstasy, enjoyment, you know, of this is, this is, this always enjoying, you know, this very lovely expression. And again, it's very powerful and it's hard. And maybe it might be that you guys, I've got mine on uh, non-filtering for the sounds. So for your own audibility of breath, it's an easy one to forget. But I'm going to encourage you to just amplify the breath a little bit that you can hear it sound. That's it. Imagine a herd of elephants in the savannah that you can't see yet, but you can hear them in their rumble, in that deep, low state as their sounding goes across the land. Are whales making sound, traversing the width and length of an ocean? Oh. 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 And at a given moment, you might notice that everything just drops away, the movement, the sound, the touch, and you may find yourself in a still point. It just drops away and it will start back up again. When stillness happens, honor it, love it, just allow yourself to be in the still and silent if it comes upon you. Osumi traditionally would stay on the chair for as long as it took to be find a stillness, five minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, but she would let it run a cycle of movement to still. And out of stillness, the movement starts again, finds its way again. Oh. 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 Guys, just continue for a few more minutes to play with that as I tinker with some electronics here for a minute. Mm. 
Invite everybody to just gently just come back. Again, today is, I recognize I apologize for interrupting a lovely process, but I'm just going to ask everybody to just slowly find their way back, partly so that we can educate and help those that will be joining when they're watching this video later. And then we'll go into another iteration in a moment. We'll come back to this. And sometimes I call this refraction, like in chemistry. We build up, we come down. We build up, we come down. We build up, we come down. Right in finding our way back. And that's it. And as we come back, and for those that are we're recording for and will watch later, maybe we'll take a moment just to um, give a couple moments of how that was. One thing I'm really noticed with Corey, which I, I think is interesting and, and is, is the yawning, which is a very positive thing because it's an engagement of the parasympathetic nervous system. And whenever we see that big yawning coming forward, that's always interesting to me. Horses, my wife works with horses. They're always yawning to calm, always yawning to settle. And yet it's a paradox because there was a lot of great vigorous motion and this yawning. Um, yeah, anybody? Some comments before we, and then we'll go into another round. I, th I, I think I'm just, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I am, but just trying to make it all synergist synergistic, if you will. And also sometimes I, I, I do bring up that question of what is it that I need to let go of? And so those are some things that I'm working on. It seemed at some point, maybe midway through, I don't know if my room's cold or not, but it seemed like I, it was a little chilly. Yeah. Chris, what, what I love is how you're actually telling us, you're actually telling us as you're continuing to move <laughs> and sway, which is beautiful because we're actually learning not to talk in this about rigid way, but we're actually learning to hear in this motion and we're learning to speak in this motion and i love that as you you rather than talking about it you went back within and talked from within it and that is lovely don't worry about making it synergistic the lovely thing is there's room for disharm there's the we're, you were trying to get the harmony of harmony and disharmony we're trying to get the resonance of resonance and dissonance dissonance will show up Right there, and 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 the, and the so just recognize that it's just as long as you're engaging the three, they'll find their way into a synergy, and eventually they were they beyond synergy, they find their way into a synesthesia where the senses and the sensations start to mold and mix together, and that's down the line. <laughs> How about you guys there? Oh, my mom, my wife's gonna join. Come on in, come on, come inside. This is Lisa, everybody. Yeah. Well, How about you, Corey or Elijah? Any any sort of feedback or thoughts from your guys' perspective and 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 and, and you know broader experience in, in in movement and breath and body and mind? Love it. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, this is old stuff. Old old stuff. It is old. It's, 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 it's old. It's, and it's, 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 yes, it's truly old stuff. Evolutionarily. Yeah. Goosebumps with Elijah, as you spoke, like literally my, up my whole spine, all my hairs are standing up. Uh, you know, I really, really resonate where you're speaking from there. Corey, your love of dance really looked like it started to shine through there. Yeah. 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 Totally. Totally. Yeah. So what I'm going to suggest for this next round, I'm going to do, we'll do one more a vigorous round. And then today I want to introduce this as a, as a healing modality in a couple expressions and have a chance to work on Lisa so you guys can experience how this can shift from the chair to actually, you know, working with other people. If you listen to your own call, then it's the same call with anybody. There's only one call as we learn to listen to the call. 
but in this round, it's going to be a little different. We're going to invite you to do all of the three things and all of the three layerings in the fullness of expression that you're willing to let forward and come. But I'm going to un unleash a little bit. So it may look like that it's distancing in some sense. But the other way to think about this is just, again, I don't really like that word transmission because it has so many you know ways that it it's more about a kind of invitation and levels of communication that those parts of our biology and unconscious can grab and move and hold of, right? All of a sudden, like, you know, maybe all of a sudden, you know, it's a sense of being hit by something, felt by something, moved by something, right? And so I just want to open into that possibility this time. And so we'll let that go in. Does that sound good to you guys? Yes. So again, let's just again, find your, find your position on the chair, feel your feet on the ground and your relationship to gravity recognizing that it is not just a horizontal and a vertical, but really get the sense of being immersed in a medium that lets you have the full three dimensionality of movement and the fourth dimensionality of moving through time, right? In creating this. So starting in again, that sense, my computer might go off in a second and I'll just, just keep going and I'll pop on the zoom in my phone. Um, oh. There we go. Oh, 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 <laughs> 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 
Facebook on. Mm. All right. So with that, I'll start having you guys find your way back a little bit again here. Mm. Now it's interesting for Osumi, my teacher Osumi Sensei, and in this tradition of Seiki Jitsu, the notion of Kiai. You know, this, this ki like often in martial arts, it'll be the shout or this expression. I think in, in, in Zen as well, like with the encounter with the Roshi, do they actually call it a ki I believe they would still do call it ki right? Like when it comes forward, is, is, is that, would they use that terminology, you guys? Sometimes, yeah. I think. Um, but if you ask, they'll kind of, you know, they kind of tell you, yeah, that's what it is. But yeah. I think often maybe not totally out, outwardly spoken about. It's interesting because, you know, in the martial arts, it's sort of done by your, often it's like, you know, like ki here, or you're coming in and you add it as a kind of a more, an extension of breath and energy and flow. I only ever in my martial arts experience, only a few rare times received where the ki came forth, like out of the master, like in, in, in a way that they were ki rather than they were ki you know, and so... Uh, and that was always a very profound experience because it literally would hit you like like in the core of um and i think what's lovely about seiki we use that word kiai but it, it is emergent it is like it it you it just it comes forth like it, it it arises and comes forth it's not an intentionality right and so and and i think that's a, a big part of what this is and it'd be easy to mistake like a like a chicken egg mistake of of that you know, so, um, I think and imagine like beyond just the sound, like I remember Corey, you saying when, when you were doing the chanting, that there's a, there's a place at a time in the development in your practice where you're being chanted, right? Like, and, and then, and the Roshi immediately recognizes it, that transition, right? Like as, right. Uh, I remember you had quite a profound story about that in, in, yeah. in your, some of your writings. I think, Bill, that the the actually the Mu Koan is it, that's what that's about. Kind of is this um, becoming this um, letting this this through. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's really about. You know. Yeah, 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 and um, and it's a beautiful thing. And again, this theme of the becoming, becoming the sound, becoming the sway, becoming the dance, becoming, or the song literally shapes and you, you you know what i mean like it um i don't know those words you know what I, you know what they point and so so yeah so that so there 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 is but this for me is just my practice now right this is just it's nothing it's nothing special it's nothing different than you're doing it's just the sitting on the chair and moving into it now i could do this you know sitting on the ground and again Eventually, the nice thing, the chair also creates constraints and boundaries that standing is even more free. So it's nice to start with less free because sometimes choice and more freedom is more difficult, right? So, but all of this can be done in a standing sense as well too, right? Like in terms of where we move. Um, any sort of thoughts on that? And then, you know, for the, the last part, I want to give a little something different to everybody to show how this can be, how you can, this can be a dyad, a partnership, it can be more than a dyad. It can be with a group and how the sense of this is, can be a, a healing practice and healing modality as well. You know, and of course there's a self healing modality in what we're doing as well as in our, an aesthetic and expressive one. They're all aspects of this wholeness. How is that there? That was that, was it a little different with that, with that, that input? How did it inform? I guess is what I'm asking. Hmm. Hmm. I, 
I I want to say for me just uh, just uh, continued invitation uh, of 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 this whatever this is. But well, yes. yeah, whatever this is, that's so beautifully said. Like whatever this is, I still see the same thing. Like whatever this is, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and and that and keep that. Like never let go of the, whatever this is, you know, yeah. And and you know there is a real again as long as you do it with a childhood curiosity and naiveness and wonderment, it is okay to try out imitation and tinkering. Let, you know, I saw this. Let me just try it, but with, but only if it's cu with childlike curiosity, wonderment. You, you know, that deep, that 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 very early learning imitation. Let me just try this on, not the later the imitation of later life. That that just fucks it up, right? Like it's like the imitation of learning a language, or the imitation of learning to walk, or the imitation of little children wanting to be like their their parents. Like that's a lovely. There's there's space for that here. Absolutely. Uh, something that's on my mind yeah. is uh, this concern that's in my you know mind, my mm. thinking mind. Uh, like uh, you know, can this be healing for me? Like if I have yeah. some issues, you know, and 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 I don't know how much I should attach to that or or not and just or just let it, it's, it's a simple it, that's it's always such a simple answer for me the question is golden the holding of questions is golden don't chase the answer so you come in and sit on the chair and you say can this be healing for me and then you let the answer be the expression that happens over the next 10 20 30 minutes and the next day you come with the question again, can this be healing for me? And you sit and you do this for the next 10, 20, 30 minutes and let that be the answer today. And then the next day you come with, can this be healing for me? You know, or if you put that question and we were in a black African church in the Southern United States and you said, can this be healing for me? The answer is, amen. <laughs> you know, like, like that's the answer. Speak it, you know, speak the question. You know, bring it forward, say it, speak it out, you know, but don't go chasing. Don't go chasing. We're not chasing, we're swaying. That's a great thing. We're moving and going nowhere. We're not chasing a damn thing here, Chris. We're moving and going nowhere other than right here, right? We're not chasing anything. Yeah. Right on. Thank you. <laughs> Elijah. Yeah, this was, I did a similar practice from, taught to me from someone from the Navajo church. And they, um, for a couple of years, but I had a drum. That was probably the only difference with this. Yeah. And then you could let, you let, you really let your voice out with it. Yeah. And, um, it really helped me find my voice. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like a, a, a whole nother version of the move go on. Mm -hmm. But it really helped me with yeah. coming in, actually having an authentic voice. Mm -hmm. And that, that more authentic movement, and just so gentle in that way. Yeah, um, yeah I, I just like I said, this is old stuff, you know. Yeah. We all have this door. We all have this door. Yeah, we all have this door. Yeah. I'm going to switch over to my phone here. The battery is about to go. Corey, but as I switch, any last uh, any last thoughts? I just like the, it's so, I love the just raw, raw, carnal, primordial feel to it and hearing you and hearing it just, yeah, I, I love how, how primordial it feels and um, what a gift to be able to, it's hard for people to to let go into this this primordial aspect and and what it what it is to be able to do that. You know? Yeah, I think um, you know what what I and what I love about it though, I think we'll be okay with this. Yeah. What I what I love about it is the um, that there's this threefold, very simple start, can create such complexities. And it's a love, it's it, this, this, 
And like Elijah says, this is ancient and cross-cultural. So I love that too. And each culture, of course, has its flavor, like a stained glass window, that it will express it through its, its movement, its sounding, its rite, its ritual, its instrumentation. But it really is, and it's deeper than just a common human, it's a common living expression right back to one cell, you know, sort of protoplasmic expression. But these three simple gates of, 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 of sway, of breath, of touch, and the infinite complexity. So it, it, it is a, a, a way that can open in and, plas and, and get past also the cultural, like, oh, I don't want to be weird. You know, like, I don't want to stand out or I don't want people to think like, you know, like the self-criticality, right? It, it is a quick way to get past that. And, um, you know, I, I very much uh, like that. Are you guys hearing me okay with the phone? Is that, is this okay? Yes. We, yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to, what I'm going to switch now to is just a little different expression. So um, I'm going to now show, uh, again, now keep your eyes open so you can see and experience it. But I'd like you guys to keep finding your sway and movement and resonance in a nice way. Again, we can turn this into service, right? So I'm going to, you know, we're, we're going to, I'm going to focus and work on Lisa. But when I say that I'm working on Lisa like here, I'm also working on me because there's no difference between Lisa and me. Like this is going to be a unified expression. At some point, she may work on me. It may switch. It's like an AC current that goes back and forth. And you guys there is the, are also part of this holding, right? You know, how your sound, your movement, your contribution. When I was with the Bushmen in Southern Africa, the whole, the, they never do this alone or in pairs. They always do it as a community. Right, and the whole community is part of the holding, right? And so, just inviting you guys all into that, you know, sort of shared holding. But I'm going to get uh, Lisa to sit here, and I'm going to go. I'm going to get sort of two levels, right? So, Corey, you do, you know, body work professionally, and and the nice thing is we can start with just a very simple, don't scare the patients <laughs> type of way. Uh. Right. And, and the very, you know, very simply, mm. right. Already, right. I, I, I already, I've been feeling because of the sitting, because of, uh, you know, our connection that we've all had here today. And already I can see like already I, there's a sense of circuit and flow through my whole body. I'm, I'm very surprised. As soon as I, I held, I felt it uh, I'm very much. I loved it. And so notice right away what I am mm. uh, calibrating to isn't Lisa. It's to my own experience of us, right? My, I'm calibrating to the, my interior experience. And then I'm calibrating to the exterior experience. And as Corey often says, how do these insides and outsides become one, right? How do I meet the exterior and the interior room? And already, so now just very gently, you can't see this, but my hand has started a vibration on her back. And of course, Lisa does this work with me. So she's already tuning and toning in a kind of open, practiced, you know, experienced way of receiving. And you'll notice that what I said about our sway, about our sit, you know, I'm swaying, I'm touching, I'm breathing, I'm listening to my call, the call, our call. And all of a sudden, this isn't so different. And all of a sudden, it's still. And this is important. When things still, I don't try to make it happen. In this work, never try to make something happen. You'll hurt yourself. You'll feel that you, the injurious thing of too much self-conscious effort. So when there's nothing, when it just goes away, I just say that just the wave just passed, another wave will come. And already another wave's coming. We're founding ourselves just gently in a sway here. Already the next sense of how this is, Moving will move. Oh. Now, you know, in some sense too, there could be something that just looks so traditional, like cranial, like you know, I could do just like a cranial sacral kind of unwinding. I could just be in the joints, you know, it could look like a very traditional kind of manual practice. I'm not going to go there today. We'll go to sort of that more middle ground of the direct translation of you guys on the chair to working with somebody. Mm -hmm. Corey, already you could see, and Elijah and your own family, how you could start to work on your own family, like taking this chair work and just saying, hey, let's make this an impromptu 
session. Hey, you're struggling a bit today to your kids. You're got an injury. You're a little down. You know, you can see how this can become something, right? You know, mm -hmm. to your partner. Now, this is really interesting. I didn't see much. I saw it with Elijah. He was working his hands off the body. And again, I don't want to give, you know, is this energy? Is this field? I don't care of any of that. To me, it's all aesthetic. It's all just what needs and wants to come forth. And in this moment, there really is a sense of just working off the body. Forget theory. Forget, oh, I'm doing this or that. It's just doing. Oh. 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 Now we're getting into scare the patient's territory, but it's good for you guys. So <laughs> I want to start to go, you know, and to move into this a little more. And in many ways, this is getting into the territory that Osumi called Seiki transmission. It didn't have a special name. It's Seiki Jitsu itself was originally just this, just this sharing, you know, of this in this sort of, well, tuning, transmitting, resonating you know, bringing each other into, and it's not a from me, it's a through me, and it's the wholeness of the entire world. Mm. And we're just part of that one small expression in this moment. Huh. Oh. 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 Mm. I just everybody feel into this moment. And so now, you know, so now, now I just want to just ever so gently just nurture and nourish Lisa's body and spirit's response. Just letting it settle. Just letting it find its way through and in, out and forth. Wow. 
Thank you. <laughs> but you guys come back. Since they're coming back. All right. That's a little different. Eh? <laughs> Love it. Thank you so yeah. much. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, Corey, I'd love to, I know you you always are great to give space to everybody and kind of put you on the hot seat because I, I really do appreciate your reflections. You know, let me let me just share something just really that's important for me. I, whether it's this or the sweat lodge or Bushman-like work or any of this, for me, I always appreciated the, this sort of a, a, a small debrief and the feedback, not for a building of the ego. Like, like I don't get me wrong, plenty of time in my life where I, you know, that validation pat on the back kind of thing. I like it because, all right, it's not even I like it. I, 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 I need it and appreciate it because in the in the very depth of the work. There, there isn't, there really isn't a recording process going on. Like, you know, like there isn't like, there isn't like, oh, I, I, I am like, they're like, I'm perceiving such that I'll remember and then have something to, you know, like, and then to have somebody to say, oh, I was like, I understood and was there, you know, you, you know what I mean? Like, and so I, I, what there's a, the feedback for me becomes very important, like multi-perspective feedback because then that creates this sort of post shaping for me, mm -hmm. that that part of me that still really needs to, mm -hmm. you know, see and be and understand that. It's like, oh, that the multi-perspectives recruit, like that representation from these points of view, they're, they're, they're important because they somehow also then feed into the next round of freedom, right? Like those voices, those inputs. Does that make sense what I'm, what, yeah. what I'm saying there? For so sure. I, I really do appreciate you know, like, like I get in many ways, it's not about like, yeah. you know, but it, but I do appreciate, mm -hmm. you know, being able to hear that because it does help calibrate, Yes. you know, down as it goes further along. So I'd, I'd love to hear your, I just, especially I just, from the perspective of working on people and healing and all those things that you do, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I just find it very inspiring, honestly, mm -hmm. and that, um, you know, it makes me um, excited about, um, you know, our possibility of interacting with people and how beautiful and powerful it can be and how, um, you know, we maybe we, we know that and then we, you know, whatever patterns we get into that we, we start to do, but, oh, this is, this is real, this is, um, there, there are more mysterious things going on. I just love that so much just to be, to feel that and be in that space with, with you all today. And I find that just so inspiring, honestly, like, oh yeah. Um, it just makes me inspired about life, honestly. I love it. And, and there earlier, you mentioned about the unfolding in, in the Moo Koan yeah. in relation to Kiai or, you know, uh, maybe not, an academic sort of discussion, but like more more of a remembrance, you know, or uh, that remembering, like when 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 that voice moved forward and came forward. Yeah. Do you, do you have any recollections or the the sharing or the sense of or, or receiving it? Perhaps when you received and yeah. felt somebody's move come back at at you and maybe the Roshis in such a visceral visceral way or. Yes. Do you do it like how that touched and felt like in an embodied sense? Yeah. You know, is there anything that you would, you'd say to us in that that experience of that, that that was so profound and has been so ancient and universal within that tradition? Um, here, here's an example. Um, often the Roshi would do a, a poem when someone died or when there was a um, um, certain, certain event, he would do a poem and then at the end he would do the class. And um, the, the katsu is, is so primordially powerful that yeah. we all cry 
Like if yeah. you really work with them, you just you just ball. Yeah. You, this sound that is so ancient, it's so primordial. And um, I think this stuff feels kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's so great that we've got to feel and find those people in our life, right? Like like for me, it was like obviously goes to me in Japan, but you know, the Bushmen and yeah. like like where this where to feel that. And it is primordial and it does come from the earth itself. Like, like, right. You know, as I think of our standing work, like, like through the feet, through, um, you know, through the, like, like, you know, through like how that, that just so like, it, it literally is shaking from that deepest place, you know? And, and like, and, and again, how the, the, like the tears, like that is, it's not a reminder of the primordial, it's a transportation right, right into that reality that has never ever gone anywhere you know right. it's it's still exactly right there right. I, I love it that's a beautiful sharing thank you like, i really appreciate that right I, really I, I think also like um you know that we can we can get mental about things but then when you're confronted with something that's um that's so so like that so um so so raw and that just so um it can be really life changing, you know, for me. Can I share just a story that that evokes in me that you just shared? Um, I was watching this old um, French documentary of the Bushmen from the the seventies, and they were out hunting, and they came across a leopard had just had a recent kill of a a small deer, like a, a you know, like a an impala or something like that. And the leopard, there was a big male leopard and it was right on top of the, of the, of its kill. And big cats and the Bushmen frequently steal from each other. The Bushmen will kill something and a big cat comes and steals it from them. And, but the Bushmen have also learned to steal from these cats. And so these two Bushmen hunters are, are staying off in, in the, like out of visual, right? Like they're in the bush, they see it. The cat doesn't know, the leopard doesn't know they're there. And the one Bushman makes the sound of a bigger male leopard and he just like he just goes in and all of a sudden there's just this oh, I can let see if I have another second <clears throat> oh, 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 oh. and he makes this sound and it hits me like it's a video from decades ago and it's like oh, and I'm like holy cow right and in the video the leopard takes off but it hits me and all of a sudden I can make the sound. And in ceremony with other people, all of a sudden the leopard would come out and it would hit them. Like, and they would have this visceral response. And it was like candles lighting candles, you know, so ridiculous, you know, like off of old video footage, you know, like, um, and it wasn't spiritual. They were out hunting. They were just in the land and it was just so ancient and deeply not removed. Yeah. But something there pierced me in the moment when they sound it, you know, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I love it. Amazing. You know, Elijah, let me, let, let me jump to you. Like if, um, in, 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 in there, I, I, again, Elijah, let me see. I just, I just, I'm just always so respect and intrigued by your background and, and the life path you've taken, you know, there's something that I don't know what it is, but every time I see you come on online, a, a smile comes across my face because I'm so glad to see you and we've never met in person, but it just makes me, you know, it, 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 there's something there every time. So I share that. I just want to share that with you because I, I, I really am grateful. But um, in, 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 what, what is your sense? And I mean that, your sense of today. That's the right word. Well, one, I'm grateful you shared this with me. Um... I, you know, I kind of didn't actually know what I was getting into at all. I hadn't watched any of the the um, introductions or yeah. all I knew, knew was this was a, it's called Seiki and it was what Bill was going to do today. So, <laughs> that's um, all I knew too, by the way. <laughs> what's that? That's all that I knew too, by the way. <laughs> well, you know, it, I just felt like this was a very familiar place yeah. and um you know I, I spent a lot of years also with uh, working with uh sufi zikrs mm. yes and they have a lot of this kind of a lot of this movement it tends to be more less well it's free 
but they had a little bit more constraints perhaps mm -hmm. you know yeah. and then yeah as i mentioned before the work um with uh someone from the navajo church right and uh it just like right back in there for me it's a um, very powerful freeing practice especially when you do it on your own and also do it with others right yeah. you know that they have a different aspect right is that exploring on your own you know nothing to hold you back at all right and then with others and dancing together in that harmony and just letting go together yeah tremendously powerful and freeing um you know all the social limitations self-judgments cultural affectations you know this is right this is wrong i'm a weirdo um, you know it's great practice in letting it go and it's yeah. practice in learning how to manifest this other in the body the voice movement um you know this is a I don't think I've found something quite like this in Zen, other than the Sun Zen room, the practice meeting with the Roshi. But outside of that room, things are a little bit more regimented. But th th I think that is the Zen really is the Sun Zen room, though, isn't it? I mean, everything else is just in service to, in some sense, to. Well, don't get me wrong. The Sun's End Room, of course, then it's in service to everything else. Obviously, it's it's like, oh, yeah. but you but, get stuck in this. I know. I, I was, yeah, I know yeah. exactly the yin yang, but it's yeah. it, it's in a very important part of it all. Yeah. yeah, without it, it'd be pretty awful, actually. You know, on, on that note of the like, the Bushmen have the dance, right? That the, the central dance, maybe once a week, maybe twice a week. Maybe once a month, like whenever it's needed, the, the community comes together and dances in this all night long in this deeply ecstatic, full on, wild, you know, take this and, and amplify it by 10 kind of way. But then they go on with the rest of their life, daily life, like, like, you know, like hunting, gathering by the fire, raising their kids, play. This is the Bushman of maybe not, you know, modernity has affected them so hardly as, as everywhere. but. But what would happen though is like what they were then would allow is if this spirit was on them, say they're out for a walk, they're out hunting, they're doing, and all of a sudden somebody has the feeling on them, it's it just on them, they stop everything and do this. And then when it, it, it passes, like a wind passes, then they go back to just daily life. And 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 there's nobody sees it as weird or different. It's just there it is. Like it's it's and it becomes this seamless um. But again, the dance is also this 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 cauldron of 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 building such that it allows that to then intersperse and spice and correct and resolve and recalibrate life and relationships to it, you know, throughout the day. It's it's a really lovely. Can you imagine being having that kind of freedom, you know, with each other, um, that we could make relationship right in this way. As it's calling and demanding to be made right, you know, and and you know that's our world's oldest culture, right? A, uh, you know, an eighty thousand, a hundred thousand year old culture. It's, it's quite profound. Yeah, Chris, new dog, you new to we threw you in the new guy into the mix of all of this. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, I I'm doing good. Um, yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. A uh, little bit of hesitancy, a little bit of excitement as well to to learn something. And 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 like Elijah, I'm, I'm really grateful and feel fortunate, lucky. Um, you know, I, I, I appreciate the simplicity and the kind of the you know just the the letting go aspects and 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 i yeah i'm pretty excited about about this session today and and i thank you for it just just yeah and again it doesn't need a lot of when we touch base you know like 
But the nice thing is you've got the three elements. It, it's a human thing. You've always had the three elements. It's not a skill. It's not a, it's not a learning. It's a remembering, right? Yeah. So easy to build. I know as we've gotten kind of time and I think it looks like Corey's probably getting ready for more work today. I just want to give Lisa a second too, if I can just, you know, if, you, if Lisa, if you wanted to share it all like with the. Uh... Um, I really made one comment about your conversation about the expression of this in different cultures, that it was interesting to hear that there's parameters within all the cultures where there'd be more accepted movements you know this one shouts this one sways this one spins you know so within those cultures there's probably that kind of holding and but interesting if we are able to see the connectivity of all of those that that's a huge potential of unity you know uh, of our recognizing that everything is unified in a very deep way like that would be amazing to have these people we call them hop maybe we'll give them a name the hoppers you know that they they've gone around and dabbled at the buffet everywhere and realized this connectivity so that's exciting and uh, the only thing i'll say is the experience today was interesting for me because uh the the energy was coming up my legs and moving spontaneous and i feel it's connection it's me plugging in and it comes very quickly. You just open the door, it comes in. But then I was trying, but I opened to what Bill, where Bill was. So I was really aligning to his um, pool, which was interesting because it was two folds. It was, it was Bill connecting somewhere on the grid, you know, me connecting somewhere on the grid. So there's two energy sources coming in. But there was definitely what that was creating, uh, which I think was a new experience for me. I often plug in when I'm working on him, but I'm going from my feeling, whereas it was neat to see um, the filtering coming through our beings to make something unique. So there was three points. Yeah, yeah. There, there's always, there's, there's a, that's beautiful, they said, there's the third. There's the me, there's the Lisa, and then there's the third. And, and, and the third, that mysterious third is so deeply informing to this. It's wiser than both of us, honestly. And it's more than just a simple synergy. You know, it, it, it really is sort of something quite wonderful. I, I, I just, I, I would just like say the same to her comments. to the flow of like the equilibrium yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That's it for today then guys, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good so day. Thank you so much. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye